What's up everybody? Kono Pro coming at you with a, another little video. Hope you all enjoy this one. So this is a subfloor that we've been working on. And so that's our master bathroom right there. And as you can see, you can see all that plumbing right there. That's all our subfloor plumbing. That's all our rough plumbing that we need, you know, to pass inspection. So, you know, to pass inspection, basically, for your subfloor, you have to have, you know, your rough plumbing and all your rough electrical and, of course, your rough framing all ready to go before you can pass inspection and then they'll allow you to sheet it. Okay, so this video basically we're going to be going over, you know, sheeting it. But real quick, I want to show you all this. You see that right there, that pipe going up? That's a vent pipe um, for, for all of my plumbing. And that has, that's filled up with water, actually. So for inspection, you need to have all your vent pipes filled up with water. And that's what we have there. And then, you know, the inspector will come and then he'll turn that hose bib right there and see water come out of your, one of your vent pipes and he knows that you have it filled up with water and it's under pressure. All right, and we have all our blocking, all our pipes are strapped, you know, everything. You have to make sure you follow all the code as far as notching goes and strapping you know because they're going to inspect all of that all right so make sure you pay attention to all of that and you know like on our last video we, we got all our blocking and everything in there ready to go all our floor joist blocking is where it is and needs to be to pass inspection and only that for plywood and you know in installation which we're going to be doing here pretty soon oh yeah see all and you see if you could see down right there you see all those wires below the floor joists if you're wondering what those are those are actually that's just tie wire that you go down underneath and you just you know attach some nails and loop it one time around the nail and then you you know bang the nail in and that'll lock that tie wire down really good and then you run it every eh, approximately every 12 to you know 15 inches and what that wire does is it holds your insulation from falling down down to the dirt and you know for years people just basically staple them in to your floor joist but then after a while you know of you know, it, they just eventually start falling down and next thing you know half your insulation will be laying on the dirt and won't be doing you any good down there insulating the dirt so we like to put that tie wire down there and that helps hold the insulation from falling down and then we also staple the insulation in all right and you know what I'm pointing at right there is that's just an access that I'm showing you all that that's one of our access points going through that that stem wall that that um you know that foundation into the other you can see the other access down there too so you see that pipe right there that's our gas main that's one of our gas mains actually that goes underground under our foundation and shoots all the way back to that back house back there right so that's been inspected already before we did the foundation and you see here we have um, you know there's some more pipes there's another vent pipe right there for our washer and dryer that's a little washer and dryer laundry room right there and then we have all our electrical right there ready to go we have um, it's coming from our existing house right there and um, we upgraded all the electrical and you can see it all we have it all notched through there we have it all stapled and ready to go it's on standby and ready for you know to tie in all our home runs to our new panel our new panel upgrade that's going to be in the wall right there oh yeah so there it is everybody so coming up right now is going to be um, us just uh, throwing down this plywood and uh, hope you enjoy the video Video. What we're going to be doing here is laying down some 
tongue and groove three quarter inch plywood okay this is the kind of plywood you need to use when you're doing subfloors all right what we're going to do is first we're going to hit it with some subfloor glue and then we're going to hit it with our and then we're going to lay our plywood down lock it in right here we have the the female edge of the tongue and groove and then we're going to slide in with the male edge that way okay let's do this bro First you get your plywood, you bring it over. I like to dry fit it first. Go ahead and lay your down on the corner. Make sure you're good. Drop it down. We look good there. We look pretty good here on our, see how we're about halfway on this? On our backing right here, this is our floor joist. That's what we want. All right, now what we'll do, stand it up. All right, go ahead brother, rock and roll. Let's get that subfloor glue down. So now what he's doing, because he's applying this subfloor glue. And um, another quick little tip, this subfloor glue, if you get it in the case, and uh, if you just pull it out of the case, it might be a little cold and hard to pump out of the caulking gun. But if you leave it, you know, laying out in the sun, like we have over there, leave a couple tubes laying out in the sun, what'll happen is it'll get really soft on you. So that way when you when you cut your hole on the end of it, and, and then you poke your, um, you know, your, your nail through to get your, to get it flowing, it'll come out nice and smooth. All right, you gotta make sure you get it, you know. Feel free to get it all over the joist as much as you can. When it's a double joist like that, double uh, blocking, what we like to do is do a little zigzag effect. Get that back in there. Uh, let me see this thing real quick. So basically the way these cotton guns work is you take the caulking gun, and so say that wasn't cut, what you do is you put that in there. If you get a good caulking gun, it has a little knife on there right there, you can cut. You stick this in there, you slice that, right? Cut off the tip. Then what you do is you take this, then you go ahead and, and you do that, and that's gonna poke a hole in there so it's ready to come out. And if you let it sit in the sun for a little while, it's gonna be really nice and soft in there. Then you put it in like that, release it in, squeeze, get your pressure, now you're ready to go. See what he's doing, you see how he started? He did like half of it, did a section, then he finished off that half, and he's gonna sort of run this bead, this bead, he's gonna do, you know, right along the edge there, and then he's gonna go back, and he's gonna hit all those blocks there. But when he does, he's gonna hit the inside edge of that block, closest to this sheet of plywood that we're about to drop. And in that way, if for some reason, you're taking time doing something else, or you get pulled off the job, and that caulking doesn't get underneath the plywood, it won't harden on you. And you know, if you do have to take off, then it's a good idea to go ahead and wipe off any caulking that you don't use, excess caulking or subfloor um, caulking, you know, wipe it off if you're not gonna, if it's not underneath the plywood, you're not gonna end up getting more plywood on top of it before it dries. All right, let's drop it. All right, bring it in, set your corner in there. Nice, okay, let's drop it down. All right, we're looking pretty good. Nice, I like that. All right, let's do this. That looks pretty good there. Okay, so now what we're gonna basically do is we're gonna smack this in, then we're gonna nail off this all the way through. Boom, 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 we're gonna take our chalk line, we're gonna run our chalk line, and then we're gonna snap these lines, and then we're gonna use those chalk lines to you know, have a really good layout for our nails, for our grid. Okay, and then also what we're gonna do now is take a block and we're gonna smack it in there, which my block is right here, and I've used a couple times. You know, so you take this block like this, and go in like this, smack it. A little bit more. Sometimes you can jump and do that technique. Like that, knock it in, knock it, get down here get it in sometimes that's about all you're gonna get okay but I think we can get a little better so then we'll go over here can you please put the nail gun down put pressure on this right there okay now we're gonna go ahead and smack this side in okay. 
good. All right, now this corner's back out. Okay, good. That's what we want. Looks good. Okay, see now what we did is we hit this in. You gotta be careful not to hit this too hard or break that lip. Seems within an eighth inch gap, that's good. You wanna give it a little bit of play because if you have it too tight, when it acclimates and the wood dries and cures and dries and cures once it's here for a couple weeks, you wanna have a little bit of play in there. Okay, so then on seams, we do six inches. Okay. I went a little wilder, that's more like four. And you want to stagger it, so you want to have your screw staggered like that. You know, so basically every six inches, staggered. All right, now we're going to snap our line. Well, first, before we do that, we're going to go back to this side, see how we came out. Let's get my block. Where's my block? Right there, let's get this on there. Make sure my side's good. Looks good. No, it's good. I like it. Okay, and we'll take this. Boom. Okay, let's get our chalk line. Let's pull our chalk line out and let's get it. Let's get our grid going. This right here is a flush nailer. It doesn't allow the nails to go in deeper than the plywood. Oh, we got a nice little new one we're using here. Okay. Okay. When they're new, we gotta bring it back a couple times to get the chalk roll even on the line. Okay, pull it. It's a little tight, brother. I'm not really liking that one. Here, you take it back. Here, let's get this one out. There we go. All right. It looks like a good chalk line, but go ahead, we got it. It looks like a good chalk line, but when they're brand new, they're a little stiff. We're shooting a little video right now, so we want it to be nice and smooth. Alright. That's good enough, brother. Do right on the line. That's good. Alright, now what we'll do is we're gonna go through and nail this thing off. Alright. First things first. When you put a nail there, you don't want to get it too close to the lip because you don't want to get inside that um that female edge for the plywood there. You can call it female edge. Um, you can call it like a slotted edge, whatever you want. So typically you go 12 inches, 10 inches in the um, center, in your field they call this, and they call this your seams right here. So along your edges you go six inches on your seams, and then in the field 10 to 12, depending on the plans, depending on the code. Mine, I believe you say 12, but I'm doing like 8 or 9. It doesn't matter as long as it's minimum. That's minimum. Okay. Boom. Never look directly for checking for nails. You never look directly down at it. You look at it at an angle. Make sure there's none engaged in there. Looks good. You always want to keep like the hose behind you, not in front of you the way it was a minute ago. You want to keep it behind you. It's not in front of you. Alright, we're good there. Good there. We're pretty good. We'll finish off the rest of the shooting there. Boom, boom, boom. We're going to walk away with that.
right, so check it out. Look, what I wanted to show you all right here is you see how these joists are running the opposite way of the other joists? So they're basically running perpendicular of those joists. So what you have to do when you're running subfloor plywood, no matter what, you have to run it perpendicular of your floor joists. So if your floor joists are running one way, you need to run your plywood the other way. That way it's, it, it helps give it structural strength, lateral strength, and seismic strength. And so basically the way these plans were drawn out was um, this, this master bathroom over here, the joists, because of the footings, it was such a small span between the footings, I'm assuming that's why they drew it out that way, the structural engineer, was to run these joists this way, you know, from, from left to right, instead of from the back of the wall to the front of the, um, you know, from the, from the wall to the yard, like the other joists are ran. So in that, so because of that, we ran this plywood opposite of all the rest of the, all the other plywood there. <clears throat> you see that. And so basically we can keep it as perpendicular to the plywood. And that gives it the best strength. Um, it helps for layout too. That's basically when we do the framing, we do the framing layout. So that way it can land, you know, your plywood can land eight foot on, eight foot on center or four foot on center on your backing. All right, everybody. So that's what I wanted to point out right here. And if you're all watching the video and wondering why a couple sheets of plywood are facing the opposite direction, that's the reason. Because we want to maintain our plywood running perpendicular to our floor joists. All right. So, and also, you see how we notch it for all our plumbing. That's that's how we like to do it. We like to give it some nice clean notches. And you see that edge right there that's hanging over? That's typical. You just cut that off. Afterwards, you snap a line, and you just cut any little bit of plywood that's hanging over. Sometimes, when you're installing, you know, subfloor plywood on a subfloor, you know, to catch layout or whatever to maintain layout, you might run a little bit off run your plywood off of the edge a little bit but that's fine you just go back afterwards and snap some chalk lines and cut it with your skill saw and to you know make sure it's all flush around your rim joists all right there we go snapping our lines so we can get clean nailing on our floor joists and there you go
it is everybody so floor basically finished off now next phase is going to be throwing up the walls that's going to be the fun part oh yeah i hope you all enjoy this project um we enjoy putting this all together for you and um you know just appreciate you all please share these videos with all of your social media that'd be awesome and uh hope you learned a little something from these videos and there it is that's how we do it. Kono Pro out. Peace, everybody.